And welcome back to Career Build Series, episode number 36. And so if you've been following along, I just put out a video. It's a comprehensive tutorial from start to finish for oil drilling. And so what I thought we'd do here in the Career Build Series, I'm really excited about this new content. It's been, um, it's been really kind of the kind of content that I'm glad they do. Uh, it's in-depth. You have to come up with some good engineering solutions. I made a rig for the tutorial that's available on the workshop. And it's currently in its present form in infinite electricity, just mostly a rig to be used for demonstration purposes so that you can learn how to drill. And so what I want to do is kind of finish that up and make it so that we can use it in game. So let's go ahead and get started. I would also like if you guys could just put in the comments whether my volume is good for my voice. Um, I do have a... When I, when I edit the videos, it does come up with how many decibels I'm at. Somebody said that I was very quiet, and I think it's on their end. So I'm trying to see if it's on their end or my end. So you can let me know. I'd appreciate that. All right, so uh, I didn't hook up any electricity before, and that was because I didn't need to. All right, and so we're going to hook up. I'm trying to think if I want to hook up systems or just hook it all up. So people are saying that there's infinite electricity here. I have to look. I would rather if there wasn't, but I will check. So one thing we're going to do is, um, here, let's do this. Let's go ahead and spawn this. This is the test world. Let's make sure infinite electricity is off, as you can see. And see if I can make anything work. If it's, if it's infinite electricity. Okay, so yep. So no infinite electricity. Good. I don't like infinite electricity. I'm not a fan of it. I want to have to actually engineer some solutions. So good. So let's go ahead and hook up some like systems here. All right. And so I'm just hooking up things that belong together, like that's all my water, my uh, slurry cleaning stuff. These can go together. That can go there, that can go there. A lot of this is going to get, is going to be cleaned up as well. It's kind of, I left things kind of just hanging out where they're easy to see because this was an example. And so I'd like it to be a little bit more attractive and clean. These will be part of the fractional distillation tower. So this is going to be a lot of gameplay. This is really, I think, a big thing for gameplay. The ability to be able to drill our own oil. You know, we have to drill, we have to put it on a truck and send it to the docks and then put it on a barge or a ship to then go sell it. So I really like all those steps for industrial gameplay. That's big for me. All right, so one thing we need to do is right now we have this uh, large electric motor there. That is going to go, and we're going to put in a diesel to power this table. And that will be a little bit more reasonable instead of trying to run electricity. All right, so let's go ahead here, and we'll delete that out. All right, now I need to kind of figure out how I want to do an engine. So it's going to be modular, as is everything I do. So that's enough space there. It's starting to run on space here if I do a 3x3. Three three. I'm not a huge fan of the 3x3s three uh, for space-wise. They're good for ships. It makes sense to be in ships, but other than that, I really don't, I'm not a huge fan of them. So I think what we'll do is not make it a 3x3. Three three. My voice is a little froggy here. Right, let's go drive shaft. I don't know, I'm not sure what the torque requirements are going to be for this. So 
So, we'll st so I'm trying to think. Let's see. So this table uh, with the large electric motor was going 5 RPS. So I'm probably going to need one gearbox. And I don't know if I'm going to have to down gear or up gear. We'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. Let me just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm trying to see. I want to. So I need clutch. That's one. Two is going to be a flywheel. Yeah, so I can't put a uh, three by three in there anyway. And I don't really want a three by three. So. Do a one by one. We can put a big honk and one by one in there. So that's four. So that'd be a sixteen cylinder. So I don't know what power requirement this is going to actually have, so we'll see if this is going to need a big old motor or if it might not, you know. Could the, you know what, um, let's do this. Let's try a one by one, three by three. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. I could do a box or two, but I'm not a huge fan of that. We'll see. Because again, I don't need the speed to be that high. I just need it to be. Just need it to be five RPS is what I was getting before, and that was more than enough to uh, to work for me. So. All right, so let's see. I need to get this up and running. So that doesn't have a gearbox in it, and I have one space. Okay. So, oof, I forgot these are two buys. Yeah, you know, let's undo that. It's a little bit weird doing it like this, but whatever. Not going to grouch about it. We'll just do that for now. And then we will do... I tend not to like to just do a pump on for the supercharging, but I'm going to do it anyway. This isn't going to be very much seen, so I'm trying not to make it, try to over, overdo it. Oof. <laughs> okay, it isn't, I thought it was running into that other pipe there. Modular engine, fuel, exhaust. You know, this doesn't need to be super pretty, this motor. It just is going to be functional, so... All right, there we go, exhaust, and then for fuel, 
think I'm gonna run. Make uh, do this. Try kind of flying through the build here. I wanted the color is what I actually wanted. I didn't care about copying the tank. The tank's too big. I wanted this color. All right, there we go. That's the uh, color for diesel. The different different fluids have different colors for what they need here. And so this is going to be interconnected into the diesel system so that we can power it off of what we make as well. So I need to cut in here. So right there. Sorry about flicking the camera. Wow, I'm just doing it again. All right, uh, let's see. What's this? That is there. This goes here. Okay. So let's move this valve, I think. To here. So this this just allows me to put fuel from the from our storage tank into the actual processing tanks. And where do I need to go here? So let's go grab a couple blocks here. So let's go. All right, like so. And this just plums it all in so that once we start getting some storage diesel, we can uh, run off storage diesel. Hopefully this is enough to get us drilled down. You know, we only have to go down like 60 meters, so it's not that far, but it is a little ways. So I just do. I didn't mean to do that at all. So go grab that. Good. All right, good. And so that's uh, a little bit of fuel there, and then that will give us the ability to refill it. All right. So let's just bang together a microcontroller. After we do some other things. Do We'll do two starters here. I think we'll do four, actually. And we'll take some power off this too, but I might have to add a second generator anyway. All right. So we we'll take some cooling manifold here. That's a three by, that's a three by there. Sorry, I'm kind of in the build.
All right, so that is in place. So we have cooling, we have everything we need for this. Let's start making a microcontroller for it. Uh, let's do this. Let's grab the basics. Car here. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's see, oil rig. Rig for career build series. There we go. Uh, this is a module engine tutorial right here with a flywheel. So let's grab this. I'm trying to use more stuff that I've already made just to make life easier for me. Why is this not want to paste anywhere? Okay, what, what's up with this? Why won't this paste? Okay, whatever, we'll start fresh. Pain. Right. Am I out of blocks? That's, we're in deep trouble if I'm out of blocks here. It looks like I'm out of blocks, man. This is no good. I think I'm out of blocks. No, I'm not. What? Okay, well, let me put anything down there, which I don't know what the hell is going up with that. It doesn't want anything below here. That's weird, man. Okay, whatever. All right, so let's actually bring that back in. Okay, that's weird. Somebody was showing that on Reddit, I think, that they weren't able to put blocks down low. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, so it's letting me put them, like, within a certain area, but not at other areas. That's very strange to me. I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. All right. All right. I need some batteries here. Which, this is kind of, this is kind of rude that I can't put things down here. What the hell, man? See, like... I don't know what's up with that, man. I don't want to put batteries up here, but I, I kind of have to. I don't know, man. All right, whatever. Not, not a fan of it, but it's got to be... So. P values. This should be all set, so I don't need to really plug that in. Okay, what do you alternator clutch? Yeah, one, two, three, four alternators. Clutch goes there. P value air manifold. Radiator. That runs off a different coolant pump. RPS. Fuel manifold. All right, I'm going to have to change a couple things, but that's not too bad. Let me see. Um, engine. Okay. Yeah, so I need to go in here and change some things, so... This isn't running stoichiometry. Whatever, I'll fix it. You know what? I was going to just scrap it and do a new panel, but I'm not going to. All right, so what I need to do here is 
change seat to panel. All right, and you find where that is. So right here, I think it's this one here. So that's table on is seven. Ooh, it's almost, it was close. Six was the channel that it was on. So change that to seven. All right, so this is going to go to seven. All right, that's seven. I'll turn on the radiator, which will also turn on the intake pump. Let's restart. That will work for now until I fix it. Clutch. The clutch is going to be... You know, set up an auto clutch here. All right, so let's set up an auto clutch. So, so if six is on and RPS is greater than, say, 2.6. Turn up down counter. Increase that. I know one, one clutch, and then we'll do a knot. Starter goes off. We want to reset on that. All right, so the clutch is set up now. So this is currently reading my, this, this is reading uh, the WS. I don't want that anymore. I want to kind of set an RPS. So let's set an RPS value. Just do this for now. All right, so I think that will work. That will work for now. Let's hook, make sure it's all hooked up. It is coolant pump. Coolant pump doesn't need to go anymore. Let me check this. So it will turn on the radiator and the pumps all by itself. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that I can't put more stuff down here. This is kind of annoying to me. All right, so radiator is right here. So starter. Nope. So why did I hook that up to starter? Nope, that's right. What's this? What is this hooked to? Right here. Right, radiator. Radiator is good. So radiator should be these two and that. Okay. Radius three. Okay, that should work. Check electricity here. So this introduced a lot of electricity. We're gonna start with no no clutch on the or no setting on the gearbox yet. Batteries, batteries here. Alright, so this can go here. you that part of the engine engines connected right yep that's engine needs to be connected here gauges there all 
All right, so I think we're pretty set electrical wise. Let's give this a run and see if it runs. Okay, that runs. Let's go ahead and start the can't really hear it. I'm trying to find the crankshaft here. Flywheel's moving. Okay, so we're getting no clutch. So I need to fix the clutch. Clutch is connected, so it's a microcontroller issue. All right, so if seven is on, which it is, and the RPS is greater than 2.6, which it is, Okay, it could just be too slow of an oh you know I did point oh one instead of point one. That would be why it's just it was coming in but it's just super slow I think. Alright, let's try it now. Why is it not putting any clutch in? Did I put the clutch backwards? I think I put the clutch backwards. Let me check. Let I check. I have to see the clutch to see what I did. I don't do 3x3s three three very often, so I could very well put it backwards. There, I did put it backwards. Yep, that's backwards. The other one has a different shape, so it's easy to see. Yeah, that's too fast now. I thought point oh one was right, but so we're probably gonna have to down gear this to get that running. So it's stalling it out. Let's try slower. Gonna give up on putting in uh, clutch. Why is it giving up on putting in clutch here? Come on, man. All right, what the heck is going on here now? Why is my auto clutch not working? I've done auto clutches like nine million times. All right, if 7 is on and RPS is greater than 2.6, which it is, it's at 5, advance this freaking thing, yes, gum. Okay. That's 2.1 and down gear that a little bit. Let me just double check, make sure it's actually giving me clutch this time, and then I'll down gear it. Okay, so it's trying now. All right, good. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's make that half as fast, 0.05. Okay, and then... Yeah, so I was figuring with a large electric motor, it's probably going to have to be pretty big. So It's probably going to need to be down-geared. So let's go, let's try a two to one down gear and I'm gonna double the RPS in this. I need it at five, so go 10. I 
Okey-doke. There we go. Why is the clutch not going in now? Do I just get to such a low number that it's not doing anything now? Uh, okay, here. Let's do this. It's got to be 0 0.45 at the minimum. Let's try this. Gonna need a reasonably large motor to get that table spinning, I guess. Right, for now, let me manually control this friggin' clutch. I want to see if this is even gonna work. All right. So this engine should go up to 10. Didn't need a big motor. Didn't need a really big motor. Okay, so as long as I know this just needs an enormous motor, we're, we're in business here. Alright, so that's all it is, is it just needs an absolute beast of a motor to get this going here, so... That's not the end of the world, it's just a little annoying that I have to rebuild the motor, but that's fine. Let's do this. See, I hope I'm not at a build limit, an artificial build limit they put on here, because I don't know how I'm going to build a bigger motor right now. If I if I hit a build limit, how am I building a bigger motor that I can put in here? That's the question. That's really kind of a problem. So let's hopefully it's let's hope it's not that. Let's go ahead and cut that. All right, that's backwards. All right, good like that. Oh, stop with symmetry. Delete something I don't want to. There we go. All right, so let's see. That was fine the way it was. Let's see. Let's go. Pipe. Corner pipe. Could turn the table, but I'm not going to. I just want to get this up and running, and I can make it beautiful later. All right. Uh, 
let's try to go back to auto clutch here. All right, so that's more powerful. Let's let's give it a run. Is the auto clutch not working? I've done like nine million auto clutches, and they've all worked, and I don't know why this one's not working, right? Noxious, it really is. He's fine. Let's see what's up. Okay. So RPS is most le is most definitely greater than. You know what? I plugged this in wrong. There we go. That would be why. Okay. That would be why. Okay. I plugged it in wrong. I couldn't see it because all my lines are crossed and I'm being a pain. There we go. So it's putting clutch in too fast now. So let's change the engagement to five. Make this slower. It's going to need an enormous motor to get this thing to run right. That's it. That's insanity, dude. That is absolute insanity. Alright, we're going to need at least a four-cylinder, I would say. That's huge, dude. That's a lot of power this thing needs. Talking that's three, two, three, right there. I'm gonna have to I I have to get this thing supercharged too. All right, let's. I'm just trying to test it out here to get it going. All right, let's try this for now. That's why I like modulars. You see how easy it is to increase the engine size. So there's one RPS with the big electric motor we are running at five. So what are we down to? We're running around and I'm having to modulate the clutch. I can't even go full clutch. Jeez, wow, man. Okay. So let's get a stoic equation in there. So I can supercharge this sucker. I thought this this microcontroller already had it. That's one of the main reasons I used this microcontroller was I thought it had it, but it did not. All right, so this will be supercharged. That should be better, more powerful.
gonna take us longer to drill, but it's not the end of the world either. Okay, nice. That's that's not bad. Temp. Temp's fine. What's this running to? So that's only running up to six. What's the, hopefully the clutch is at 100%. Clutch is at 100%. So let's see where we're at in here. 2 point, that's not bad, it's still climbing. Nice, so it's eventually gonna get close to where it was. It's just, it's, I don't mind if it's gonna have, it has like a ramp up speed, so that's fine. Okay, nice, so that's running. All right. The smoke will eventually go away once this temp, once the temp comes up a little bit. Well, that's working. Nice, okay, that's working. All right, good, so let's fix a couple things. Nice, nice, nice. So that's actually not too bad right now. So let's see. I don't need to erase those blocks. Do I need to find where my tankage, where my tanks are now? Right here. Nice, okay. So it took a little while to get there, but we're there. The thing that worries me is that if there's that artificial block limit, that's kind of ew, gross, if that be the case. But um, that's the only thing that I'm really, oh, come on, man. Sit there like that. Oh, my, why will not not drag? It doesn't like the way my camera's looking. It was trying to, Drag the block in a weird way. All right, so that's now plumbed. So this will be able to allow me to f manually feed it diesel once we start producing diesel, so. Okay, good. Let's clean the top here so it looks snazzy, wazzy. Okay. Where are we at here? That needs to be colored. There we go. All right, good. So that's nice. Let's save this really quick here. All right, so I think we're pretty much set. Let's check the price. So this is actually pretty inexpensive. This is, uh, you know, 35000 Let's run it really quick. I need to check on electricity here. Let's check. What I need to find something to use electricity. So right there. So as you can see, the alternators are keeping our electricity charged. So that's that's not bad. All right, good. So we're uh, we're making plenty of electricity as well. All right, so this is good right now. I think. Let's go ahead and let's go in the actual. What are we looking at time wise here? Let's start drilling in the career build series here. If the episode goes a little bit over, so be it. But we're pretty good here, so let's do that. Let's uh, let's do this. Yep, 
Just clean that up a little bit, sitting on top like that. There we go. I gotta hide these other micros, I'm just not gonna bother yet. All right, let's go ahead and save this, and I will get back with you guys when we're in the in the career build series save. So I made a new save. The last career build series was before the oil, so I just made a new save, bought the new bases, changed a bunch of my XML to make it the same, and so I'll see you in there. All right, so we're back here in the career build series save. We don't have to buy these oil rigs, which is very convenient. Let's go ahead and load up the, the rig here. Let's spawn it. And let's drill. All right, so this will be fun. Uh, this will also be a good thing. Like, as you're at your rig, kind of doing some stuff, and you get a mission, you can go do it. This is going to be a lot of fun, man. I'm really excited about this. So let's go ahead and do swivel up. Let's move our cassette. At some point, I'll do a more elegant system where it jumps from pipe to pipe. Let's go... drill here so let's go table on slurry on table on there we go we're drilling beautiful all right let's move the cassette so i really uh, this is the type of gameplay i love is this stuff so and i've already done a bunch i did a bunch of testing yesterday to get this kind of set up but it's made me quite uh you know, quite quick at doing this drilling, so. So it took a little bit to get that switched over to diesel, but, you know. I don't know how fast we're going to burn through the diesel, but that's the thing. I could turn on infinite fuel if I really need to. So that's going to save us diesel. And the other thing is, it shouldn't be too hard to cool because, as you can see, I'm shutting it off every time I, you know, every time I have to put in a new pipe. So that's, now it's cooling down. So one thing I do want to do is, I don't want to turn the table on to make electricity. So I'll have to, I'll have to hook up a generator system. But the nice thing is, once we've, once we've hit oil, so somebody was telling me that you can leave the pipe in, you just have to make sure you disconnect it from the table, so um, that's something I have to keep in mind. So that makes sense, because it also makes an attach noise when it hits the drill head down in the hole, so I just have to keep that in mind. But I've lost a couple drill bits, so I just was a little bit overly cautious not doing that. We do have to be cognizant of electricity. We're losing a little bit, but really not much. And so what I should have done is put a manual disconnect into the table so that once we want to just produce electricity, we can produce electricity. Um, why are we not are we going down? Let me check this really quick. We are, it's just slow. You know what it probably is, is when this is at its higher range, I think the slurry is slower. So, probably just a little bit of uh, congested slurry flow. Yeah, see the slurry is a little bit slower. Once this gets down further, it will uh, get better slurry flow. So it's still drilling, it's just a little bit of a slurry issue. I'm curious how fast we're eating through this fuel. Reasonably fast, but we can also do that. See, we can steal from these tanks, too, if I need to. We're already stealing from these tanks. No, we're not. Okay. Yeah, whatever, I'm confused with that. But that should be taken from those tanks, but I don't know. I'll try an infinite fuel if need be, because I just need to know where my fuel's at. So right now I'm having a slurry issue. That should be fixed once this gets lower. I wasn't having any issues before. I 
It is drilling, it's just being a little on the slow side. So I do have a tanker trailer. And I have my trucks from before. I was gonna build some new trucks, but I don't think it's really worth my while to build new trucks. I enjoy the trucks I have. I also don't want to like have no excuse, no reason to ever use those trucks again. So, you know, most of my gameplay is actually playing my career build series. So, you know, I don't want to lose those trucks. So I was gonna try to build everything on screen, but some of the stuff I'm just not. So see how it's drilling faster now? So that's just a slurry pump issue. I could add extra pumps and it would be better. See how we're up on pump. It's these linear tracks so long that, you know, and I can't really do anything about that. I can't put any more boost pumps, but we get a little bit of slow drilling. We're all the way to the top and then it will catch up once we get lower. Check electricity. So we're making ample electricity. We've barely gone down any electricity, so that that uh, diesel motor is making enough electricity with four alternators to keep us going here. Oh, we're burning diesel like crazy though here. So that's something I need to keep in mind is this is gonna burn a ton of diesel, so I need to have a lot of diesel on hand. Which isn't a big deal, I just need to do it. I don't know why this isn't, unless I screwed up the piping. This right here should be feeding off these tanks. It is, I guess. It was, okay. So I can shut in for the fuel off here. It's also, so these tanks are all interconnected. These big diesels here, as you can see, it's eating off those because they should be going down this pipe under the ground and in, so they are. It's just, uh, just taking a second. Alright, next rod's going in. I like how, you know, the sound of the diesel starting up every time we want to drill. That's kind of fun too, I like that. I like it a little bit better than just an electric motor. So again, we should expect that to be slow. If we look at our slurry flow rate, we have very low flow rate because of the, uh, you know, what, what it's doing, I'll show you the system if you haven't seen it. So this is the slurry tank. It pumps into this linear track. It goes all the way to the very top and then it comes down into the arms here, and so there are boost pumps, that helps, but it's not enough to get it through. Large motors really, large pumps really don't have any increased flow rate. They used to, but they don't anymore, my understanding. So if you hear a hesitation, that's it running low on slurry. So one thing you can do is I can stop the down pressure, and I can actually go up a little bit, and you'll see the flow rate will increase and then go back down. It's letting the slurry catch up. And so this is pressure. This isn't really telling me anything. What I want is these are these numbers, but I can't report those numbers. So I have to just go off pressure. And when this increases the flow rate, that pressure should go up. So it gives me some indication of what I'm working with. I need some paint here. You know, the uh, example rig was faster just because you're using infinite electricity. Uh, spinning the table at uh, five RPS, this is down to about half of that, so. That's running at seven. So I can play with the gear ratios to get that better. Um, lower the RPS of the engine and increase the RPS of the table. Let's see how we're looking at fuel need be again I will turn on infinite fuel that's not something I'm afraid of it's I put on creative to like I said to kill frustration and it's it's just something that you, you know you can do one thing I need to do is 
Okay, so I can I can reverse fill this tank here. Let me just double check, make sure I actually put a fluid. Okay, so I can actually fill my. So I'm trying to think how to fill these tanks. I could put a port here, or I can fill this tank, and then open the valve, and that will fill it in. So I could do that as well. But we're doing all right here. So if we look, our pressure is coming up because if you look here. Uh, it's not, we're not getting there yet. Once we get a little low, okay, see how we just jumped to 50s? Okay, see how we're, like, we're starting to get up in the 50s now? So it's getting low enough that it's getting better flow rates now. So we're starting to get better flow rates now. Check our electricity again. Yeah, so see, the, so what's happening here is the, the pit is reading the battery. Okay, maybe it is. What the hell's going on here? Alright. Somebody was saying this has infinite electricity. I don't know, man. I don't know. I checked it. Why are these not clutching? Okay, so. I don't know. I gotta figure it out. But it's whatever we're drilling. The other thing is, I could have screwed up the flow rate by putting in that pressure gauge, too. I test taking out that pressure gauge, too, because this had much better flow rate before, and now we're having issues, so the only thing I really changed, see it we're stable now, was this pressure gauge. That pressure grade, gauge might be screwing up my flow. Alright, so this is pipe number three we're putting on here. Is that correct? One, maybe four. Four, that's pipe four. So if this is pipe four, uh, I know because I've done this well many a times, uh, 60 meters is when we hit oil. So we actually don't need all that much diesel because we're only running this till we hit oil. Issues. I think it's that pressure gauge. That's literally the only thing I've changed. Let's put that pressure gauge on. I might take that out. Because that's pretty much the only thing I changed with that pressure gauge, and that's uh, giving me some issues. So I have to keep that in mind as I uh, kind of re re uh, rethink some of my design choices here. Yeah, because that goes into a T piece, which will kill your flow by putting a pressure gauge in. So I might want to get that out of there. What I can simply do is just put in a a delta coming off of the slurry tank and know how it's flowing. So that that'd be a, a better way to do it. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. But we're doing all right. Um, we're down. This is gonna be pipe number five, and so we only have to get to 60 meters. So. Check all our diesel tanks while we're at it. All right, so we have enough diesel. We should be good. Let me see how we're doing here. Cleaning slurry. We're cleaning slurry. This has a good bit of slurry in it, so we might need to s slow down for a slurry refill at some. Let that slurry clean, but don't worry about too much. Alright, so I'll get with you when we uh, need to put in a new rod. Alright, so we're getting back uh, close here to a pipe change. Let's go ahead and check the well depth here. Yeah. You can use a radio to figure out, uh, to report this, because the wellhead via radio will talk to you. 
and so you can report the well depth, but I just, you know, most of it is, I know each pipe segment is 10 meters, so I can estimate if we're getting close, and then all you have to do is turn in the pump jack, and if it starts pumping oil, you know you've got oil. You've hit oil, so what, what I'll do is when we get close to 60, I'll turn the pump jack on, and then just sit and wait for that to um, tell me we're pumping oil, so. Right now, as you can see, we're almost full of slurry here, saturated slurry, and this is almost empty, our regular slurry, so we're almost out of slurry. So we're going to take our time here, so that is there. So let's turn off slurry pumps, turn the table off, get rid of the swivel clamp. Now, this should go backwards. As you can see, it's slowly decreasing, and that's because this is cleaning the slurry. So we're going to take our time here a little bit, and I'm going to let a little bit of slurry uh, build back up. Now, I, I talked about this in the tutorial video, is you can you can bring enough slurry that you don't ever need to recycle it. Uh, you can essentially just, you know, if you know this hole's probably going to need, I don't know, 30,000 liters of slurry, you bring 30,000 liters of slurry. Some people are even dumping on the ground for RP reasons. I don't like doing that sort of thing. You know, it's, it, slurry is nasty stuff. You know, I, um, you, you don't want to be dumping it there on the ground, so I like to store it and clean it, you know, it's part of the game, I enjoy setting it up, so that's why I do it, you know, so, I'm not always looking for the most efficient thing, sometimes I'm looking for the most RP thing, you know. Alright, so like I said, we're at 30, so we're adding another 10 meters on that, so that'll be 40. Let's go ahead and we'll hook the swivel clamp up, and we'll drill. So that does tell me my slurry there. I do have some more space for gauges and stuff. I just haven't put it all in. You know, I wanted to get my example out. I want to get the tutorial out. And I just wanted to get people started. It's not supposed to be the most beautiful rig ever. The one for the tutorial. It was just to be get people started. And get people confident in understanding how to build it. So they can build their own rigs if they wanted to. Or use mine. All right, so I'll check back in with you guys when we need the next rod. All right, so just checking in. I reloaded the rig just to get the slurry up again. Uh, I had an airlock issue where once the main slurry tank ran out, it uh, it was not allowing me to drill anymore. So I might put a safety valve in there so that once the level of the tank gets too low, it will shut the valve, and that way you have to wait till it refills a little bit so that it can't take all of the liquid. That's a thought. I also put a filter in there that's helping. Um, somebody said that it will the pipe will not fall down the hole as long as you don't have the table connected. I tested that out. They're right. Uh, that's just something that I had lost a couple rods in there because I was, uh, you know, when it when it goes to the bottom of the hole, it will snap into place, and so the hole will actually hold the rod. The issue is that the the swivel was stuck up against it but I was able to get it free and uh, we're good to go again so you can actually reload your rig and leave the pipe in but it's not a big deal to put the pipes in because you don't have to drill that again you just have to reconnect the pipe so really it takes less than five minutes if you did have to do all your all your pipes so we should be getting close here let's go ahead and take a look at the hole I know it's dark and some people don't like when the video is dark but um, I kind of like to RP it as well so we're at 54 meters we might need another rod we might not let's see uh, what I'm going to do is, so the way to best check, way to check for oil is turn the pump jack. So if you look, you see the pump jack is going just really simple linear track. I could change the timing on that. It's a little bit off, but it's it works, so I don't really care. And so once this dial starts going, we know we've hit oil. So I'll just kind of sit here, and I'll let you guys know when we hit oil. All right, so we're in the precipice of hitting oil. I just went down and checked. We're at about 56 meters here. I'm going to stay we'll stay alive with you here and check it. And uh, we're getting close. So I know this well is around 60 meters. I thought it was 80 initially, but um, as you see, we're, we're steadily drilling down there. Let me just double check my slurry tanks. I really don't want to run out of slurry trying to get this. Uh, again, it's not a big deal. You know, this has some good tolerance for if things get a little screwy. Yeah, we have plenty of slurry to get to punch through. So we're just waiting on, so the pump jack is going. So, you know, a lot of people are gonna have the question, how do I know when to hit oil? When you think you're getting close, like, you know, some people said they've hit it as early as 40 meters. So 
I would say after like 20 or 30, if you don't know, run your pump jack. It doesn't use up that much electricity and you will start to fill your oil tank. So I just know because the dial will start to show me that I'm getting oil. And once you've hit oil, guess what? You've hit oil and you can stop drilling. So, yeah, we should be very close. You know, it's uh, 62, I think 62 to 67 is where I hit last time and we're almost at 60. So let's go up and check probably right at 60. I don't know. It sounds like everybody's been hitting at pretty much even numbers, so I don't know. But um, it doesn't matter if you go a little bit a little bit further down, but we're getting close to hitting, so I know it's uh, nighttime here. Let me just switch it to day, make it easier for everybody to see. There we go. So daylight here. We're waiting on the dial. That way you don't have to look at my flashlight. I know night can be a little bit miserable, but I like to do it for RP reasons, you know. So the color scheme, I'll go over that, seeing that I, um, we're waiting here. So the slurries are gray. Uh, when you store oil in a container, the container is supposed to be green in color. Uh, you know, you don't have to do that at a rig, but it, it would be like if you had a portable container of oil, you you put it in a green container. They tend to be color-coded. Diesel is this yellow color. Uh, gasoline is red, so, you know, you might be used to seeing a lot of red containers that you put gas in so you think all the containers are red that's because gasoline is supposed to be in a red container diesel is supposed to be in a yellow container and if you're doing portable oil it's supposed to be in a green container so that's why i did the color scheme like this we have to be getting closer let me check all right we're at 62 i think it was 67 is when i noticed it last time i even checked the video of the tutorial and i saw the needle spinning earlier than that so we have to be close i think we need another pipe we do okay so we're gonna need one more pipe send that sucker up let's grab a pipe so you notice i have a full rack i had to like i said reload the bench that's why i have extra rods here so so let's put that right there now what is going on with this I, I picked the one slot that didn't have anything. There we go. Okay. But, you know, the drilling process does not take that much time. You know, I think a lot of people had a fear or, you know, some people were said it was going to take too long. It really doesn't. And then the thing is, you're not drilling every time you need oil. It's it's like all you're doing is you're doing the work to get the straw in the hole. Oh, you know, I need to make sure that this stays connected and do that. Okay, we're good. I'm just double checking. I screwed up one where I actually accidentally took them apart. So, so we have to be close here. Um, you know, like I said, 67 is when I noticed it last time. So... I would say we're very close here. And so we'll end the episode once we hit oil. And from then on, what we're going to do is I will... So I have to look at the... We'll look at the map here once we hit oil. The price for oil was actually pretty good. And so if the price for oil is pretty good, what we can do is instead of converting it into diesel and jet fuel, we'll go sell the oil. And, you know, once the... Once the hole is drilled, we don't have to drill it again. We just have to, you know, suck out the oil. And so that's going to allow me to, as you can see, I have a tap here for the oil. So I can plug a hose in. I don't have any pumps on this. I need to put a pump on the trailer. And so that will allow me to pump the oil out of this tank and sell it if I want. Or I can turn it into diesel and jet fuel and I can transpo that to sell it so i have to see what is the most economical way to sell it so let's check the map really quick seeing this is taking a little bit of time to hit that so if we look here a liter of oil is going for 434 the price the price structure has changed since the industrial front uh since the oil update rather uh jet fuel 627 Let's see what's this this is diesel diesel is 88 cents per liter 
So it looks like, I don't, it's kind of inexplicable that a barrel of crude is that much, but I don't know what the conversion factor is. So like if we convert it into diesel, we'd be getting 89 cents per liter. So it might be better to sell it as oil for right now. So I might, oh, there we go, we've hit oil. All right, let's go ahead and shut the drill off. All right, good, so we are just sucking oil now. All right, so we've hit oil. So what we'll probably work on is I think I'm going to sell this as oil. So once this tank is filled, we're full, and I need to put it into trucks. And so one of the reasons I didn't make this storage tank enormous is I want to have to I want to have to do some other jobs, you know. Making it so that it, the tank is too big, it, it kind of makes it so I don't have any jobs to do. Uh, there's a lot we could do on this with as far as adding microcontrols to this. For example, when this tank is full, it could automatically shut the pump jack off. Now, generally what happens is as you get a certain distance away from this, like I couldn't go do a mission probably, this would shut off everything because it has to, for processing power, it has to, de you know, it has to decentralize the, uh, what's going on here so it won't run. Same thing, like if you're just trying to sell oil, it will stop. And so, as you can see, we already have a thousand uh, liters of oil, so we've already made you know, $4,000 right there of oil, or worth of oil. We haven't, of course, we haven't sold it. But uh, we still have 70 grand, which that should allow me to launch the tugboat and the barge and probably the truck. See, the thing is, I can launch the truck on the trailer and I can put the barge somewhere. So what I can do is, like, I have, you know, to buy this is 80 grand. I don't want to spend the money yet. I don't have the money. But what I can do is this. I can bring the barge in with the tugboat, I can tie the barge off. And if need be, I can go get, move the tugboat, get rid of the tugboat, put it back in a workbench, launch a truck. The other thing is, let's see if there's some cell points. I don't think I, okay, what's this cell point here? Oh, that's all, that's the gold and everything. I was just zoomed out so much. So there's literally no place to sell any sort of fuel here, which is it, which is a little bit interesting. What's, that's coal. Yeah, so there's no place to sell there. But what we could do is uh, eventually we'll load our oil most likely onto a truck, send it off the road down here, and we can move it. The other thing is we could put it on a train, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to get into trains right now. But so that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. So we have oil here. As you can see, it's just going to continue to pump. So this is pretty cheap. We could turn it into diesel and jet fuel as necessary with the fraction tower. We'll be doing that in the series. Still going out and doing some missions. And so plenty of stuff to do here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I will see you in the next one.